So recently a mate of mine did a video called Why I Switch Back to Windows 10, and overall, I think it's a pretty good video. But there's a few things that he brings up that I disagree with, and I thought I would address them here. So I'll link to his video in the description below, and also I have a card up on the screen, you guys go check him out because he does make a lot of really cool videos. So now that that's out of the way, let's get started. So I think a good place to start would be where I agree with him on. So one of the early points that he brings up is that Windows 10 is really big. It's like 20 or 30 gigabytes. And that is entirely true. Pretty much any Linux distro you're going to run, unless you purposely make it massive, is going to be way smaller than that. Obviously, if you're going to cram your Linux distro full of games, it's going to be bigger. But by default, the initial install is always going to be smaller. And another point that he brings up is that PowerShell is incredibly slow. I've only used a little bit of PowerShell, but every time I've used it, it's been pretty bad and I don't particularly have any interest in using it. Another point that we agree on is on accessory support. So I had a lot of problems setting up Wi-Fi and I imagine that the problems will extend also to Bluetooth devices. So in the video, he discussed how one of his wireless headphones, he had trouble actually hearing the audio. I haven't used any wireless headphones on my Arch system, but I imagine that dealing with that would be just as difficult as getting Wi-Fi set up. And another point that we do agree with is he mentions the use of Adobe products as a reason to stick on Windows, but then he goes on to say that things like GIMP and Caden Live are also very, very good alternatives. And I completely agree with that. The only reason you really need the Adobe suite is if your job requires it. If your job doesn't require it, you can generally make do without them. So yeah, programs like GIMP definitely have a bit of a funky interface, but once you get used to them, they're really not that difficult to use. One of my mates is also planning to switch to Linux, but the problem is that he needs a specific music creation piece of software, and I don't know what any good alternatives for that would be. So if you do something like that, then I can perfectly understand wanting to stay with Windows, but for video editing and photo editing, unless your job requires you to be using the Adobe suite, then you really can just use the alternatives for the most part. So one of the issues that he brought up was once when he formatted a USB drive with Gparted, it wasn't able to actually be read after he'd unplugged it and plugged it back in. I haven't really come across this issue, but I, when I was using Windows, I didn't have any trouble. So maybe sometimes Linux has problems actually formatting drives. I don't know if this is actually the case or if it was just him being unlucky the few times he had tried this or if there was a problem with Gpart at the time. So before we move on to the major disagreements, I'll go over one thing that is a sort of disagreement, sort of him not doing enough research to work it out, or maybe at the time this just wasn't available. So he brings up the fact that you don't always know when you need Windows, and the example he gave was having to flash the BIOS of his motherboard. And I don't know if when he tried to do this, this wasn't possible or if he just didn't do enough research because on the first result of DuckDuckGo, I found a method to do this using FreeDOS. Sure, this isn't the most direct method to actually flash your BIOS, but it can be done. So you don't necessarily need Windows. It is definitely a few more steps to jump through, but can definitely be done. After this, he brings up flashing the firmware on cameras. I haven't ever had to do this, so maybe this is something that you can only do on Windows. So now we're going to move on to the points where I really disagree with him, and either my experiences have been completely different from his, or I don't know, maybe he's maybe he's just wrong. So the first major disagreement is on UI consistency. He mentions how on Windows you tend to have apps that all look very similar, and then brings up the fact that on Linux you tend to have GTK2 apps, GTK3 apps, QT apps, and whatever else there is out there. And you know what? This is completely wrong. So this exact same problem exists on Windows. Sure, if the only apps you're using are .NET apps, yes, everything is going to look the same. But you can use Qt apps on Windows, you can use Java apps on Windows, these all have their own default styling systems. You could even use Electron apps and there you've got an entirely new problem where you just have JavaScript, HTML and CSS. So if you want the exact same experience where all of your apps look similar, like using all .NET apps, you can just only use GTK2 apps, you can use only GTK3 apps, only Qt apps, only Mono apps. This isn't a problem that exists solely on Linux. It's a problem on Windows as well. Just off the top of my head, we've got the Adobe suite. So Photoshop, After Effects, all of that. You've got every single web browser that exists. None of these follow the Windows UX design experience because they are not .NET apps. But 
if you're only running the Microsoft Office suite or you're only running anything that's built in .NET, then you're going to have that experience. But otherwise, I really don't think that this is a point in favor of Windows. It's kind of a problem with every operating system that exists. So the last point that he brings up that I really disagree with, I don't know how he managed to even say this, but he said the graphical file explorer on Windows is good. I don't know if we were just using different operating systems, but I've never had that experience with the Windows File Explorer for years. So every time that I've used it, it's been really slow. It's not really found what I wanted it to. And it's just been a massive pain to use. One of the points he brings up is the fact that it has a lot of features you can do with it. But my counter argument is... When are you going to use most of those? Like, sure, you can sort by just hundreds of different things. It's probably not hundreds. It's actually like 20 different things. You can sort by all of this different stuff, all, this, all these features you have, but you're never going to use most of them. And the ones that you are going to use are available with any file explorer on Linux. Another point that he brings up is that it shows file associations. This is shown on Linux as well, on pretty much every single file explorer, unless you're using some of the most minimalist ones. Like even Thuna, which is XFC's file explorer, has this. And the last point that he brings up is that you can display your different files in neat columns. Like, honestly, that's, n that's not something that you can bring up in favor of the Windows file explorer. Every file explorer does that. That's what file explorers do. So to finish off the video, I'll talk about two things where I don't really disagree or agree with him. It's just I don't really have any opinion on it. So running a Linux VM as opposed to running a Windows VM. Unless you're doing, say, Windows gaming, it doesn't really matter for the most part. Like, I've run a Windows VM before, not on this system, back when I was using Mac OS. Yeah, that was... A long time ago and when I was doing that it was fine it wasn't great but I wasn't doing anything super intensive sure if I wanted to try and play whatever games were available at the time that would be an issue or if I was trying to maybe do some video editing for example that would also be an issue but I think I was doing some database stuff at the time and that was not an issue it was um whatever Microsoft database thing is SQL Server that one and the last point that he brings up, I haven't had any experience with this myself, so I don't have an opinion on it, is the Windows subsystem for Linux. I've heard mixed opinions about this. Some people say it's good, some people say it's not. But if you're having a good experience with it, sure, go ahead, use it. I don't really care how you want to experience Linux. If you want to experience Linux, then that's a good enough alternative if you really need to be on Windows. If for some reason you can't get off of Windows, like you have to use the Adobe Suite for something, or say you are a .NET developer, for example, then it makes perfect sense to be on Windows, but I don't really think that most people are in those situations. But if you are, then hey, the Windows subsystem for Linux exists for you. So I know that I was coming off as fairly sarcastic during this video, but don't get me wrong, there's no beef between us, obviously. Like, you can run whatever you want on your system. Like, that's your system. Do whatever you want. If you want to run Mac OS, you want to run Windows, you want to run BSD, or even... DOS, I don't know. Whatever you want to do with your system, go right ahead. It's your system. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. If you like this video, remember to like and subscribe and hit the little bell icon below if you want to see more from our channel. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about this video and what you think about Windows or Linux or whatever OS you're using, I guess. And I've got a Twitter account that I don't actually have anywhere to put on the screen, so I'll do something with it. I'll work that out. And yeah, that's everything for me, so I'm out.